excited. I'm excited. We have a guest speaker today that uh, has a real, uh, first of all, love for the Lord. A very humble man and uh, has a desire to fulfill God's kingdom agenda. And he's, he's doing it, uh, much of that with young people. And uh, me and my wife were blessed and several others were blessed to see his his young people come down to Chicago and they ministered to the pastor at, at Bishop Jones uh, uh, Leaders, Pastor Leaders Conference and we were just so blessed by his young people. We just, we said, boy, it's just exciting to see young people follow their pastor and have that kind of relationship with their pastor. And uh, uh, he also ministered the Word of God and I didn't get a chance to hear him, but my wife and minister uh, Wendy had a chance to hear him. And when they, after they heard him, because I was in the, doing another workshop or listening to somebody else present a workshop. They came immediately and told me, he said, Pastor, we got to have this man. Right. Yeah. We got to have this pastor come. Yeah. Amen. So he's here. Amen. All the way from Alabama. Amen. All the way from, uh, it, it, it's, uh, you, you've heard it on TV, Martin Luther King, uh, Birmingham. Birmingham, Deep South, Alabama. Let's welcome Pastor Camilo Fuller. It's such a blessing to be here this morning. I want to thank Pastor Susberry and his beautiful wife. And I want to just take just a second to introduce to you the best decision I ever made in my life. Mm. She's here and she is in the flesh. Okay. But not in the flesh, but I mean she is. <laughs> <laughs> my wife, Sheila, she will be standing And uh, last night, I want to thank uh, Minister Marty and her husband, Wade, uh, for taking us throughout Chicago. And I told them this was the best trip to Chicago I ever had. Amen. And Amen. it was the first time I thought to myself, man, I'd like to just come back here and visit. Amen. I always come just to, they just took us around and showed us a great time. Thank you so much, Pastor, for, that was, they did a great job of their assignment. They were awesome. And uh, I just want to take just a second to brag on them. Uh, and, and thank y'all for inviting me. You know, uh, it's, normally I'm, I'm used to doing two services. We do a 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock service, so I'm a little bit more rushed with, uh, with our service than we would be here, but uh, this don't mean I'm going to take my time and keep out here all morning. <laughs> Go ahead and alarm you there. But, uh, in fact, I got my little timer here to help me. Uh, I need to... Okay. Thank you, y'all. I think my battery is good enough, but just to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> we all set up with everything. Amen. Let's get this. Uh, y'all just bear with me as I get all this stuff together here. All right. Cool. All right. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and we bless you for this day. I thank you for this wonderful church. We thank you for this awesome city. We thank you for this awesome opportunity, Lord, to bring your word, to share your word. Father, we thank you right now, Lord. I thank you that you in tune me to the needs of this great church, even. And Lord, may I speak only those things that you would have spoke, that you want us to speak. This morning, in the name of Jesus, we love you, we praise you, we honor you. Holy Spirit of God, may you come now, and may you just have your way in our lives. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. 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 Good morning again, and uh, I have a, a word for this church, and I want you to kind of hear it, and it goes like this, knock, knock. You know, as growing up in the 70s, um, they would always have these big knock-knock jokes. Amen. Well, unfortunately this morning, this is not a knock-knock joke. It's from Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. 
And this is Jesus speaking. He was speaking to the church of Laodicea. He had just told them, he said, look, I have this against you. I, I want you to be hot or cold. But because you are lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. And he said, Pastor, that's sort of hard, especially early this morning. But if you will look in that passage of Scripture, mm -hmm. the first thing he said, I know your works. So actually he was talking about the works of the Laodicean church. And he said, you're neither hot nor cold. Hot meaning a boiling hot. Cold don't mean necessarily a freezing cold, but cool. He said, you're not hot, you're not cold, but you're lukewarm. And the word lukewarm is best described in our society today as room temperature. Mm. It's sort of simple like me taking a, a coffee cup, this morning I had coffee, and I don't know how many of you drink coffee in the morning or, or hot tea or whatever, but when it's supposed to be hot, you want it hot, don't you? I mean, I do. And, and when it sits there for a while and it gets lukewarm and you stick it up to your mouth, you just want to... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just, it's just, it just ain't right. <laughs> and so it's like Jesus going, look, I, I'm expecting hot. <clears throat> I'm expecting cold. Mm. And, and he gets ready to take it and it's room temperature. Yeah. And so then later on in that passage, we get to this part here where he says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. They were so lukewarm, they didn't even realize Jesus was not even in the house. Jesus mm -hmm. said, I know you think I'm in there. You hear me, but I'm having to talk through the door. Because folks, sometimes we put up walls, doors between us and the Lord. And so this morning, uh, we'll be talking a little bit about some of those walls and doors that we as a church, that we as a people have put up between us and God. Let's go on a little bit farther here. <laughs> the word knock, and this is interesting because normally when I hear the word knock, as you do, we think of somebody like knocking at the door. Look at the definition of the word knock. Mm. It's a knock to hit something. Anybody ever been hit before? <laughs> Such as a door. You can hit a door too. With knuckles of your hand or with a hard object, such as a knocker, in order to get people's attention. <clears throat> I am right there to say, when we hear the knock, we must be careful to ask the right question. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we have knocks in our life, and the question we ask is, why? Mm -hmm. Why me? Why now? Why us? <laughs> and the real question should be, who? Hmm. Can you imagine somebody knocking at your door and you're going, Why? <laughs> Do you want to know who's there? Right. Mm. In church, a lot of times things happen in our life, and it's actually God knocking and we going, Come on, Why? Mm. Instead of who? Mm. See, it's important that you know who because it defines whether or not you want to open the door or whether you want to keep it closed or not. When you know it's the Lord, you better open the door. When he's like, it's me, Jesus. Come on in, Lord. If it's the devil, you know, it's just be all silent in the 80s. Be like, shut the door, keep out the devil. Be like, shut the door, keep out the devil. Shut the door, keep the devil in the eye. Shut the door, keep out the devil. Light the candle, keep the devil out. And a lot of times the devil begin to knock at our door. And we tell myself, why? We open the door, tell him what you want. No matter what he want, you already know what he want. The Bible said the thief coming not but to what? Steal, to kill, and destroy. If it's the devil, he's on there, he's there to help you to have fun. That's right. See, young people thank you. <laughs> I mean, no, he never steal, kill, and destroy. When it's all said and done, that's it. Some of the older people think he just there to no. Who? Everybody say who. Ooh. Next time something happened in your life that hit you hard, say who. Mm. Who? You say, well, God won't hit me hard. Well, you know, the Bible says this. He said, all those the Father love, he chastens. Right now. 
And that, now, see, that don't necessarily mean that, you know, some people get it all out of discombobulation. Yeah, well, the Lord made me sick, and Lord, no, no, that ain't what I'm talking about. Yeah. There are a lot of things in your life that hit you. Mm -hmm. You got to say, Lord, who? What do you want, Lord? What are you trying to do? What are you trying to say? And this is really interesting here, as I, as I begin to uh, you know, knock something out here. Oh, I put a little effect on that. <laughs> Those are me. Getting more fancy than needs to be. The knock of the Lord is his voice. Everybody say his voice. His voice. You see, it don't sound like. Come on, my man. You know, sometimes the pastor gets up on Sunday morning and he actually says something. I mean, he might get up and say, The Lord tell us to compel men. And, and, and you don't really understand it's him knocking. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, see, so if you don't compel men, where are they going to be? What's going to happen to the blame? Mm -hmm. You know, the, the problem with the world is not the world. The world do what they do and they do it well. Amen. You know what the world's supposed to be doing? They're supposed to be sinning. Oh, wow. They're supposed to be inventing new ways to sin. Amen. I mean, they see the internet and they see a whole free porn shop. Yeah. <laughs> They supposed to be inventing ways to sin. They doing it and doing it well. That's right. In the church, we like we don't want to bother Amen. them. What if we offend them? And Jesus said, "Compel them." Yes. <laughs> well, is that pastor just saying something? He just want people to come to church, uh, or maybe it's the Holy Spirit knocking because you just set up the door. Mm. So, you know, I'm gonna do everything. But I ain't gonna do all that. We ain't. You'll be bringing people to church and stuff like that. <laughs> you know how he'll be. Sometimes the Lord come in there. And they have a real long announcements sometimes. And sometimes the Holy Ghost come in. And, and I don't think I'm going to do all that. Mm. Knock, knock. Mm. Listen for his voice. Now this is real interesting. When the Lord showed me this. And he said, I, I know you said, why are you putting voice there? But let me go back to a second. Behold, let's read this slowly. I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my knock, that ain't what he says. Which means that his knock sounds like a voice. No, it sounds like a voice. You hear, this is really interesting. The first time we hear knock in the Bible, it's right here. Well, here, voice. And, the, and they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. You see when he knocks, what are you going to do? You say, well, well, I love the Lord. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Amen. Mm. Amen. When I talk, you'll obey. Mm -hmm. When I knock, you'll open. Mm. If any man hear my voice, let him what? Open up and I will come in and what? Stop, Stop. Stop with him. See, a lot of times we get it. Like, oh, I don't want God involved in this part of my life. Yeah. No. Watch out. No. Preach. Preach. No, you shut the door. You can't go. You know, maybe you're single and you go, well, I don't necessarily want one of those church men. You know, I've actually heard single women say this. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I've heard single women in the church say this. <laughs> Amen. Yep. They want to act all religious and all this kind of stuff and <laughs> talk about God all the time. Well, he not. <laughs> Preach. <laughs> See, let me tell you, you don't want a, you want a man that's gonna hear God's knock and open the door. Yeah. You don't want a man to knock you aside your head. <laughs> Cause I assure you, they are out there in the plenty. Yeah. It'll be to get your attention. Yeah. You want a man to speak God's word and get your attention. Yeah. Amen. Not like boom, boom, boom. <laughs> they will do it. Knock. Everybody said knock. Nah. Heal them, the Lord. Knock, knock, knock. Any man hear my voice? What is he saying? I was gone. Adam heard him knocking, but 
He had the wrong response. You see, to be able to say, I heard him knock. A lot of people come to church and say, well, I heard the word. But what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Knock. Knock. Any man hear my voice, let him hide like Adam did. That's what Adam did. He went and hid among his work. Hmm. Pastor, I don't know about Elam, but a lot of times in my church back home at Love Conference Hall, some of the favorite things my people will do is they hide among their work. Hmm. Mm. Preach. See, he's supposed to be taking care of the trees, not hiding them. <laughs> no, why you want here, brother? Why you do? Well, I was just busy. Mm. Wow, See. busy. You can't be busy and in sin at the same time. If you're gonna be busy, be busy for the Lord. Mm. And I was at a business meeting. The guy said this, and I just cracked up. He's like, "What do you mean you're busy? How you gonna be busy and broke? <laughs> How you doing both of them?" <laughs> This encouraging people to do do the work of, of the business. You're like, what, what you mean you're busy? <coughs> you know, it's, it's like, oh, you know, what you mean you're busy? You're busy and we got empty chairs. Mm. How you busy and we got empty chairs? Mm. How, how, how does that happen? Mm. Y'all feel me? Yeah. See, because sometimes we need to stop and just go, well, what are we doing? I'm telling you, the world got a lot for you to do. I mean, there's Facebook, Instagram, then there's Empire. <laughs> then there's Empire. <laughs> then there's waiting for you to, to wait on Empire to come on. <laughs> and then you gotta like wait for Empire to come on again because it has ended Empire. <laughs> you know, God tells you to build an empire, not watch one, and it's supposed to be his empire. God says, I promise, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Yeah. Yeah. Earth as it is in heaven. Let me get on. He hid among the trees. Let me tell you, see, you can be very busy, and busy not doing what God told you to do. Amen. Amen. If you're busy not doing what God told you to do, then you did what Adam did. You know why Adam hid? Because God told him to do something. He told him not to do something. Mm -hmm. said, Adam, I'll give you this beautiful garden. Adam had no need of nothing. Amen. Nothing. Thank you. A lot of us go, well, we sin because we're just in bad environments. Mm -hmm. No. Adam had a perfect environment. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yes. He yes. didn't need nothing. Yes. God, they told him, don't eat from this tree. He had a whole garden of trees. Amen. It was just one tree he wasn't supposed to eat off of, and he did it. And when he did, he hid. Sin will make you hide. Yeah. Mm. God's presence, y'all. You know, I know it's not real popular today, and you may not hear a bunch of TV preachers talk about it. In fact, there's some people that say you don't need to repent no more because you know that ain't real all that important. And Jesus already died for your sins. I guess Jesus didn't know that when he was talking to the church of Laodicea, did he? <laughs> for some reason, maybe he just got absent minded and just came out of his mouth, repent. <laughs> there were five churches in the book of Revelation that he talked to, and three of them he, he just kept saying, Repent. Yeah. Repent. Preach. Repent. Yes. So he's still saying repent today, y'all. He didn't stop saying repent because you know why? Because we're still doing dumb things. Amen. Yes. We are. yes. And repent simply means stop doing the dumb thing you're doing. Yes. <laughs> y'all have to excuse I'm out southern. I hope you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Last time I was in Chicago, I was talking to somebody. He just started laughing. Well, you just sound so country. <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> so he hid. The question is, what are you going to do when the knock comes? And see, the knock don't th it don't happen the way you think it do. Yeah. God knocking right now. Yeah. He's knocking with his voice. Yeah. Mm. What is it? He's knocking with. Let's take another example. That was one of when somebody didn't do it. This one here, we're going to look at an example of when somebody did do it. 
This example of a knock, and somebody didn't do it, and we, this is what we saw at the end this morning. Exodus chapter 3, verse 1 says this. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he hid the flock to the backside <coughs> of the desert, came to the mountain of God, even a horror. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked. And behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. Sound like a knocking about the curtain. You see, y'all, you got to be at least as smart as Moses. And when the bush is not consumed, figure out why it's not. <laughs> Don't ask why, ask who. The bush is there. Some of you talking about, Pastor. Some of us got bushes in our life that's not been consumed. Mm. It's just on fire. Yeah. And we don't even know why it's not consumed. Mm. But we have not let it dealt with the fact, God, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to say in my life? Here the bush is burning. Moses turned aside. Everybody said, turn aside. Turn aside. Sound like he repented to me. That's what's turn aside. Make that turn. <laughs> and when the Lord saw wow, that he turned aside, God, God, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush. Well, the bush was a knock. Mm. Any man hear my voice? Look what he says here. And said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. Everybody say, Here am I. Here am I. You know, that's what God wants you to say when you knock. Yes. Not he ain't here. <laughs> <laughs> Not like the, you know, it used to be a long time ago, insurance men would come to the door, at least down the south. And, Yes, they did. Mama didn't have the money. She sent a message to the door. That one ain't here. Amen. <laughs> Amen. They sure did. Imagine telling God you're here. I, I'm not here, God. <laughs> I'm looking at you. No, it's really not me. <laughs> what are you going to tell him? Moses said, Here am I. Yes, you see that voice? He recognized. Yes, see, the Bible says in John, God says, My sheep know my voice. Come on, here am I. Here am I. This morning, where are you at? Some people just don't hear because they're not really here. Their mind's elsewhere. I mean, your mind could be on the buffet, you know. <laughs> be like me. I'll show up back and get up for 10. They, they have the brunch and buffet this morning. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I'm so sure she hurry up. She, but, no, you got to be here. Everybody say here. Here. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of times people come to church when they're not here. They'll be like, well, that just happened to me. I'm like, because you want to hear. Mm -hmm. Brother, but you want to hear. You were like somewhere else. Something else was on your mind. Mm -hmm. Here, my. Here, here, mm -hmm. here, my. And he said, draw not nigh hither. Don't come no closer. He said, Pastor, I thought God wants to come closer. He do want you to come closer. Watch. And he said, draw not thy hair, put off thy shoes from off thy feet. He wants you to come near, but he wants you to take those shoes off your feet. Mm. So what, what are you talking about? I'm talking about the shoes. Yes. You know the shoes you've been walking in? What you, what, where your walk been taking you? Wow. You see, you could like be here am I, and you can't get close to God. Because you still got your shoes on. Mm -hmm. You got the shoes of that old walk that you've been, you've been walking wrong. Mm -hmm. See, you can come to church and still be walking wrong. Pastor could be teaching. He could be saying so. Oh, hey, you're talking again about old brother and bishop now. You know, I don't, I don't think I need to tell nobody about God. Everybody, I, man, I tried to do that anyway. No, baby, keep going. Keep going. Because somebody need him. Somebody need him bad. Sometimes you talk to folks that just ain't ready yet. 
Sometimes that knock ain't hit them side of the head. Sometimes you got to keep going and keep going and keep going and don't stop and be absolutely on your job all the time praying and asking God. You know, a million, how many people in the city of Chicago? What's the population? 2.5 million people. Oh, they there. Amen. They waiting on you. Amen. You think you waiting on them? They waiting on you. They want God so bad. Amen. They don't know what to do. They trying to get high. Amen. They don't know how to stop getting high. Mm, they amen. Getting household cleaners. They getting you know, old marijuana. They got new marijuana. They got the spice. They got all this stuff, and they trying to get out of where they they going. I am miserable. Mm. Every. Friday, yeah. Saturday night, they going, I am miserable. I got to escape this. Yeah. And all they know is that bottle. All they know yeah. is sometimes you want to go where everybody know your name. <laughs> <laughs> you can always let you came. They're trying to get here. They don't know how to yeah. get here. Yeah. They, need to, they need you to shine. So Jesus said, what? Let your life so what? Shine. He said, I don't see my way. Well, I don't want to be rejected. That's what most people say. God said, tell them. Go. And it's amazing. Jesus told us to go. And all we do is stay. All we do is come. He commands us to go. So you want me to go? Say, hey, no, just go outside and find somebody that don't know Jesus. Let's start there. Amen. Amen. You may not feel called to Africa or Haiti like this, the sister Lord called that. You, you may not feel that. Okay, but at least go. Go to your neighbor. You ain't got to do it. We ain't got to take them to offering. <laughs> Nothing. I mean, you can just like go there, you know. Hey, and, you, and, and sinners let you know they're sinners. Yeah. <laughs> they don't hide. They don't hide. They'll cuss you out. They'll be cussing everybody else out. I mean, sometimes they don't even, they, sometimes they don't know they're sinners like really sinners. They need help. They be like, well, I don't church. Cuss you out on a minute. Amen, amen. I'm sorry, I'm in Chicago. They will use profanity. <laughs> then he says here, cussing. Draw my put off your shoes, off your feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. God, and Moses hid his Face. Everybody said Moses hid his face. Moses. Moses. Yeah. Yeah. For he was what? Afraid, Afraid to look to upon look God. Upon God. <coughs> then, see the voice of God is going to evoke something in you. If you love him, you're going to love him more. Yes. Yes. Mm. Yes. If you've been running from him, you may be afraid. A lot of people just don't do what God told them to do because they're afraid. Yeah. Let's watch yes. this for a second. God goes on to tell him, I've seen the pain and I heard the cries. Verse 10, he says, Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh. Don't you see me hiding from you, God? <laughs> that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I? That I should go unto Pharaoh, that I should bring forth the children of Israel. When you hide, you're only looking at yourself. He said, but you don't know. I, I ain't been all that right. It's hard for me to do what God told me to do. <coughs> the reason we don't do what God tells us to do is because we're so focused on us. That we make it all about us. Yeah. God is saying, I heard the cries of the children of Israel. I hear their cries. I know you ain't got it all together, but I hear their cries. Their cries are striking my heart much more than the fact that you don't have it all together. Mm. It ain't about you. So Moses goes, Who am I? So God, listen to this. Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The Lord your Father hath sent me unto you. 
They shall say unto me, What is his name? But go. What shall I say unto them? Here God goes. God said unto Moses. It was almost as if Moses didn't say all the stuff he just said. It was almost as if what Moses said stuck in God's ear. Who am I? Watch what God does. And God said unto Moses, Remember? I am that I am. God said it don't matter who you are. What matters is who I am. And let me say that one more time because see sometimes we get stuck in our rut and we're so busy thinking about us what we can and what we cannot do. God said no matter who you are it's who I am. You move based on the fact of who I am not on who you are. Because it ain't about you it's about me. Thy kingdom come thy will be done. And he said thus y'all shall say unto the children of Israel I am have sent me. God answer was, I am. I'm going to skip down to chapter 4, verse 1. And Moses again, he gives his excuses. He sounds like us, don't he? <laughs> don't, don't he sound like us? I know sometimes we read stuff in the Bible and we be like, I will never do that. We do it all the time. <laughs> we do it all the time. We be like, hmm. Lord, they, they know. They're not going to believe me. If I tell them, if I go to somebody and tell them God your name, you don't believe me. God said, don't you worry about them. You worry about me. Mm. Wow. Just do what I told you to do. Yeah. They overcome him by the blood of the lamb, by the word of the testimony. Some of us ain't overcome because we ain't talking. <laughs> Moses answered and said, but behold, they will not believe me. And behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken to my voice. For they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him. Moses had what I call a poverty mindset. Now he grew up as a king. Don't get me wrong. He, he grew up knowing what he knew. He grew up learning the finest of languages. Learning all about Egypt and, and all the beauty of the land. But something happened to Moses. Mm. Like some of us, you know, when you was a child, you could dream. You could believe, you could fly, you could have all this stuff going on. But then sometimes stuff happened to us. You know what happened to Moses? Moses believed so strong that he was called to deliver the people that he went and he ended up killing a man. Mm. He ended up running. It's been 40 years in the world. Mm. Moses thought, I am the man. 40 years later, he going, who am I? Mm. Wow. <laughs> wow. You see, you ain't ready until you're ready to lose yourself. Yeah. Moses lost himself. He lost his identity of who he said he was. Now all of a sudden, Moses, who am I? And then Moses said, they ain't going to believe me. I tried to tell them before. They just like, they ain't going to believe me, God. Remember 40 years ago? I, I, I showed them. I beat up one of the Egyptians and killed him to bury And they went and talked about it. Mm. Look at him. He killed his own kind. So a part of the mindset had stayed in. Mm. You know, I was telling somebody this week what the part of the mindset always does is it asks the question, how much does it cost? Mm. A wealthy mindset asks the question, how much is it worth? Preach, amen. amen. <clears throat> yes. You always know poverty is eating at your brain because you go, how much it costs? Uh, See, how much it costs is irrelevant. It's how much it's worth that's relevant. I'll give you this example and I'll shut up for the day. This week I had, my mom was in her 80s. And uh, I was running a little short on money here and there. And, uh, you know, big bill I had to pay, but our basement steps were falling. Mm -hmm. Termites had it on one edge of them. And I went to bed Tuesday night, and uh, I couldn't sleep good. Because I knew my mama wasn't going to stop using them steps. Well, she had started doing this walking on the other side. Mm -hmm. It had been about an eight-foot drop if something had happened to them steps. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow. 
And I said, well, I probably could do the job, but I need a saw. I ain't got no saw. You know, a saw costs $30. I ain't got no $30, $40 to spend on no saw. I was asking the question, how much does it cost? But then I started looking at my mom. And I said to myself, wow. how much is she worth? Amen. And if something happened to them steps, and something happened to my mama, because I held back $40. Because I'm thinking about $40. And I'm not thinking about how much my mama worth to me. Quit asking how much it costs. And that's how much it's worth. When it comes to this bill, you know, the pastor was trying to say, how much is it worth? How much is it worth to pay off this bill? How much is it worth to have a full-time evangelist? I'm already dreaming. I'm already there. How much is it worth? Quit asking how much you got. But I ain't got the $20. Quit asking. If that's all you got, get what you got. Bless God. How much is it worth? Get out of the poverty mindset. Get out to the wealthy mindset. See, the wealth, wealthy people are working on their net worth. We ask how much we make. Yeah. <laughs> how much you get paid. Mm -hmm. Wealthy people don't ask that question. Mm -hmm. So they look to add to their net worth. Mm -hmm. So how much it costs is irrelevant. Will I be worth more after I put the money there? It's what's relevant. Yeah, I, I know some of y'all still do Some of us still, we, we, it'll hang on to you. You may get it tonight. How much is it worth? <laughs> How much is it worth? Here it goes. And the Lord said unto him, what is that in your hand? And he said, a rod. Yes, yes. You see, Moses was looking at what he didn't have. God was looking at what he does have. You see, when God calls you, it don't matter what you ain't got. What matters is what you got. Because yeah. what you got is what he's going to use to do what he want to do with you. Yeah. Now, what do you got? Yeah. I got a stick, God. Yeah. Watch what I can do with this stick. Oh, All right now. You got the stick. What is in your hand? He said, cast it on the ground. Hmm. You see, some of you got stuff and you used it to protect yourself. Hmm. God said, throw it down. See, that's what a rod does. So y'all understand, like a shepherd has two base equipment. He has a staff, mm -hmm. which is, uh, that's my time. I'm sorry. You can go ahead and finish up. We're going to finish it. I'll finish up. Can't leave you right now. He has a staff and he has a rod. The staff is to help him with things that are near. The rod is to help him with things that are far. What he would do with the rod if, a, if, a, if an animal is attacking him, he would then take the rod and throw it at the animal just to hit things at a distance. Some of us got out distance. And we're using it as protection. What, what rod do you have in your hand that you're holding on to? And God said, give it to me. Give me, give me, give me that weapon you got. Give me that. What is it you use to protect yourself? God needed it. Because when God, when God saying, watch this. And he said a rod and he said, cast it on the ground and he cast it on the ground and it became a serpent. Wow. Which would you want? A rod protecting you that you throw one down or a serpent? God said, so I can take what you got and make something brand new with it. But you got to give it to me. You got to give it to me. So, Elam, I want to leave this with you this morning. Quit looking at what you don't have. Hear the knock and do what you can do. Stop looking at what you can't do. Do what you can do. Because what you can do is what God called you with. And what God called you with is what he's going to use to save this city, to save your neighborhood, to save your grandchildren, to save, to save your uncle, to save your aunt, to save your mama. It's too much at stake. Quit asking how much it costs and ask how 
much is in your mm. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and we bless you right now. We thank you for all you're doing and all you're going to do. Lord, I ask that you take this message and let your voice knock on the door of our hearts and let us open our hearts to hear you, to fulfill your will, to fulfill your purpose. In the name of Jesus, I pray for this great church. And Lord, I pray that it will be a place of refreshing. Yes. A place, Lord, yes. for those that are hurt, those that are starved, yes. those that are out, Lord, we'll be able to come in, Lord. And I thank you for this great pastor and his wife, Father. And I thank you, Lord, that this church understands the great call that's upon his life. Yes. And they will support him with all that's within them. Yes. Yes. Quit looking at what they don't have and look at what they do have. Yes. In the name of Jesus, I thank you. I am that I am yeah. have sent me. Mm. In the name of yeah. Jesus, yeah. Yeshua, our Savior, we pray. Everybody say amen. 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 There's a number of things that uh, really hit me. And I know it hits you as well. I like the last part, he said, uh, don't ask how much it costs, how much is it worth. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to remember that as it relates to giving to pay the church off. Not how much it costs, how much, it's how much it's worth. The souls, your family members, the city that's going to be saved. Amen. Yeah. That's a powerful word. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that rich word.